Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to the series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. This one I'm going to be doing another six uh, PDF review. Uh, mostly Shadow Dark Adventures, but there's a couple non-Shadow Dark Adventures in here. It's just more generic, old school games. Um, these are some really cool ones. I really like these. I'm going to be starting off with The Ravenous Den, which is a very short dungeon. This is only four pages, but it's a really flavorful one. It's really gruesome. I like it a lot. Uh, so The Ravenous Den is really, really cool. Uh, then I'm going to be looking at Downsides Dungeons Issue 5, which I've looked at the first four issues in other uh, videos before. I'm going to be looking at The Crystal Mine, which is another very short adventure. This is for level 4 through 6, and I think that's kind of cool. Higher level adventures are, are a little bit less common, I think, in OSR um, circles, and so it's nice to have one here. I'm looking at Frostmire and the Baron of Languish, which is sort of another adventure set in the Frostmire region. I've, I've reviewed one of them before, and I really liked the first one. This one's also really good. It's very different, I think, but it's, it's quite good. I'm going to be looking at the Forest of Doors, which is a really interesting and unique adventure. It's almost not even an adventure. An adventure. I mean, it is, but it's it's very different than the standard fare that you get. And I think it's 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 worth checking out. And then finally, I'm going to be checking out Wonky Willie's Authentic Interactive Extravaganza. Fun for the whole family. This is hilarious, and it is just bizarre. I think it's really, really funny. So I'll come back to that <laughs> when I get to it. Well, let's start off with the Ravenous Den, which is a quick dungeon for level 2 through 3 adventurers, designed for Shadow Dark. Now, um, I think the creator of this is the same creator as the one who designed the Rotting Garden, the Rotten Gardens, or Rotting Gardens of Lesia, which I've reviewed before, and that's a great, flavorful little adventure. The idea here is that there is this um, shrine or this lost totem in the woods that mutates animals, wildlife, into these ravenous creatures. And so hunters have gone missing and, you know, got to find it down. So it's a very short, maybe one shot. This would be a great adventure to throw into a region just as something happening in that region. You have, basically you're fighting, you know, giant centipedes, uh, dire rats. There's a bear in here. And there are a couple NPCs, or rather one NPC, who is still alive. Um, uh, Denora is uh, missing a leg, but she's still alive and uh, can maybe help you out a little bit. But it's very short. Again, it's just a few pages, and you get the, the, the idol of the Maw, and you can get a blessing of it. Um, and that blessing is actually kind of interesting. Uh, you lose a d4 charisma, which is not so good, but you get a bite attack that deals d6 damage. That can be really good. Um, if you're a, a wizard, having a d6 melee attack might be great, or a mage, you know, in Shadow Dark, that's a great thing to have. Um, and then you get some horrible, <laughs> some horrible uh, manifestation of it. Well, the, the, uh, the tattoo of the ravenous beast that animates, that's kind of cool. Um, but the fingernails turn into fangs, palms salivate, ugh, that's so gross. <laughs> but it's pretty cool, and there's some magic items here like Braces of Archery, a Potion of Giant Strength. Um, so it's great little, that's it, that's, that's the whole thing, just these four pages. Uh, and really the adventure is just two plus the map and the random encounter page. So I think this is a great little adventure to, again, throw into a world, throw into a region, uh, and have it be a rumor that the players hear about, man, the wildlife in the area is getting weird. Maybe it relates to something bigger, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's a side quest, maybe it's just, again, something, if you have a few threats in an area that you want the players to play it more sandbox style, the Ravenous Den is one of them. I think that'd be pretty cool. And you could easily expand this out into a much bigger adventure. Maybe there's a cult that's dedicated to this and they're looking for this totem. Or maybe this is just one of many locations where these totems have been placed or unearthed or discovered again or activated. And so a bunch of these creatures are starting to mutate. You know, the wildlife is becoming bad. Uh, maybe there's a druid involved and the druid's also gone mad in this, you know, this, this, this old totem, by this old totem. Anyway, I think there's a lot of cool things you could do with this. So anyway, I'll put links below to where you can get it. Obviously, I'll put links below to where you can get all of these. The Ravenous Dead. Great adventure. The next one I'm going to be looking at is, as I said, Downsized Dungeons, Issue 5. The Future Now Past. That's this one. Uh, this one's really funny because it deals with giant space hamsters, which is kind of an, uh, an in-joke, I think, right, from the the whole history of D&D. Uh, we get it with Minsk and Boo, right, if you guys know them from, from Baldur's Gate, from the Forgotten Realms. Um, giant space hamsters. They, they, they pop up in adventures here and there, references to them, just because it's kind of like one of those, I don't know, one of those those, those kind of weird jokes that goes around D&D. &D. Um, but this is all about them. You basically have a cave out in the wilderness um, where there are cave locusts and giant space hamsters. It's a very short, small dungeon, just like the others. Just areas one through seven, pretty small. Um, 
and then you get the monsters themselves. You get the giant space hamster itself. Don't let their charm overtake you. These khaki-colored giant rodents are deadly as they are cute. The giant space hamster averages nine feet tall when standing on its hind legs. They rarely attack unprovoked, but do not hesitate to use their razor claws or piercing teeth to defend themselves. Um, this is just very strange. <laughs> There's hamster feet in here. Uh, giant leeches. And you get a very small little map here of the giant space hamsters. Then... In their lair. So this is one of the weirdest of the downsized dungeons. I mean, the first four were pretty standard. Number four was John Carter, and the other, the other three are much more standard. This one is bizarre. It definitely takes a turn from the other downsized dungeons. So uh, some people are going to think this is hilarious and use it. Some people are going to be like, not for me. I don't think I'll ever use a giant space hamster. Um, usually if I'm going to play like a weird, wacky adventure, I play something really wacky. This is just kind of like a normal dungeon with this weird element of, of giant space hamsters. So. But I think a lot of people would like it. So check it out if you think it's uh, something for you. And it's certainly well written, it's funny, and I think the, uh, it would run a great... Uh, it'd be a great little OSC game. You could, you, could, uh, you could play it. So anyway, this is another one I think is quite interesting. The third I'm going to be looking at is the Crystal Mine. This is, again, a four through six level adventure for Shadow Dark RPG. This is seven pages, so it's also pretty short. It uses a Dyson Logos map. Um, now, one of the things about this adventure is that it's it's four, four, level four to six characters, but the encounters feel almost like they're lower level encounters. I'm not sure how to put it other than that. You'll see what I mean, I think, when we go into it. You get a recent history. There's these, um, there are these uh, really interesting crystals that are haunted, magical, spirits within them, or something within them, uh, psionic powers basically coming from them, and some miners and guards have gone missing, and you can put this again as a little one-shot, this can be a side quest, you can do a lot of things I think with this one. So it, it's it's pretty cool again as a small plug-and-play adventure. Here's the, the map, it's very small, but it's cool, nice little mine shaft, um, very small mine shaft, this is not a very big mine, but maybe you could say things have collapsed, side tunnels have collapsed. It's, it wouldn't be hard to say this is an old abandoned mine. Um, yeah, so very simple, but it's nice. It's pretty easy for the players to, to, to you know, visualize if you don't actually want to run it on a virtual tabletop. Now, one of the interesting things here is that there is sort of a psionic presence, this aura, and it's hurting people when they enter the mine. Um, and every time you come back, the first time you enter the mine... Um, or rather, each time it enters a numbered area, it tries to attack. And every time you fail, you're, fail the damage gets higher and higher and higher. So um, maybe that resets after a certain amount of time away. That's probably what I would have it do. So that way, the players, maybe they, they can't stay too, too long. Um, but maybe they maybe they can. You know, maybe they can push through it and they don't take the damage. They resist the save. but Or they, they make the save. But it's one of those things where it's just going to be doing a lot of damage by the time they get to the last room. Uh, to a maximum of 5d4, which is quite a lot in Shadow Dark, right? I can just kill you even at level 4 through 6. So this is one that the players might need to come back to once they have some sort of resistance to that psionic psychic damage. Um, you get Void Spiders in here, and that's really cool. I like the idea of Void Spiders. I used them once in my West Marches, or uh, Phase Spiders, and my players told me that it was the most terrifying way of ever they'd ever encountered Phase Spiders before. Basically what I said was the poison, I, I kind of made it this way, with the poison warps you back into the ethereal realm. So they, they basically they bite you, they poison you, and then you phase out with them and they drag you into their ethereal lair. And so you kind of are warping in and out with them as the poison wears off or as it comes in. So it was really creepy because that had this like, you know, their lair is in the ethereal realm, but it's like a mirror version of ours. And so when you get bitten by their poison, you see their lair, you're suddenly brought into it and it's this horrible, hellish, you know, uh, web infested, monstrosities lair uh, but then the other the real world just looks like a normal place and the webs are kind of half half there sometimes anyway i just described this really horrifying thing and uh i so ever since then i've really liked void spiders or, or phase spiders and i think it's really cool i'm not sure that these are phase spiders or void spiders so that's different but i do think that it's cool to uh to uh i don't know phase spiders are awesome <laughs> i used to think they were kind of silly but but i think i've found the way to use them well then you have cocoons of the guards. Ravenna, the half-orc guard, is still alive there. Um, you could rescue her, and uh, yeah, you could try to try to um, maybe use her to help you clear it out, or maybe she, maybe that she's one of the people you've been sent to find, or something like that. 
Now, there's a funny, um, not a funny thing here. There's a in the foreman's office. There's a crystalline growth, and there's um, you know crystal there, and you have to try to maybe break it or not, whatever. But there's a crystalline skeleton then there who just happens to have a plus three longsword, a plus three longsword just laying there on the floor. What? <laughs> no, no, no. I, that's one thing I would change. <laughs> plus three longsword just laying around. That's a that's a relic. That's an artifact. That's like a legendary item, right? A plus three longsword is a legendary thing. Um, that's like Excalibur is a plus three, right? Uh, uh, Durandel is a plus three, <laughs> right? Um, it's not just a random sword hanging around. So I think that's a mistake. Um, maybe plus one longsword. This is level four through six, so plus one longsword with a benefit and a flaw is much more uh, appropriate, in my view, just to be lying around. Uh, it's also probably going to be a, a, an XP reward, and again, you don't really want XP rewards to just be lying there. Usually, in my experience with Shadow Dark, what you want is to make it, um, if it's not the main reason you're there, you want to make it a choice that they can, something dangerous that they can try to break into. Um, well, in this case, you can say, you know, there's crystal growth and they have to break through it to get to that plus three longsword. But give them an indication that there is something in there worth getting. That's what I would say. Maybe they see the sword and maybe it's glowing or maybe it has runes etched on it through the crystals or something like that. Um, make it so they can probably see it um, outside the room. Um, in, in, also in the desk is a deed to the mine, which is pretty cool. The players can find that and be like, hey, if we clear this out, then we can own this thing. There's a sting bat nest because, of course, there are. You always got to have sting bats in Shadow Dark games. More crystal growths, uh, and then the crystal heart deeper in the mine with another crystalline skeleton working on it. And you can look at the stats there. Crystalline skeletons are just regular skeletons, basically, but when they break, I mean, they're a little stronger. But when they break, they shatter and do some crystal damage if you do, if you fail your deck save. Um, so it's a great little adventure. There's that one hiccup, I would say, with a plus three sword just laying there. Um, Probably want to make that a plus one, maybe a plus two, but that's even pretty high for uh, just a random sword to be found in a random encounter, basically. Um, the players would be pretty shocked, I think, to, to find a plus three sword. Maybe you're running a different kind of game where plus three weapons are much more common. But I, I just, I think that's not the case in terms of balance with the game and what the the, the pluses, how they how they act in Shadow Dark. So anyway. Um, Anyway, but other than that, I think Crystal Mine is a great little, again, one-shot, small, regional adventure. You put it in, you put it into a sandbox, you, maybe you make it a part of a bigger adventure, but otherwise it's just something happening in the region. Small plug-and-play adventures are my favorite, um, because again, you can always just put them in and players can engage with them or not. You don't have to make a big deal out of it, it's just something there for a night of play if they want to. But you can always connect it to other things. So, Crystal Mine, level 4 through 6 adventure, great plug-and-play adventure. The next one is Frostmire and the Baron of Languish. This is designed, again, for Shadow Dark RPG. Now, I've done Frost... I, I've reviewed Frostmire and the Rats of something. I forget what it's called. <laughs> Frostmire and there's these rats. Um, and it was about the city... Uh, the, the sewers underneath... Uh, the Or sewers and uh, catacombs underneath the city or near the city. And there were different factions down there. There was a witch down there or people who worshipped a witch. And uh, there were portals into a fae or into the witch's lair out in the wilderness. And there were wizards down there and you know there was it was just a lot of stuff going on and I thought it was quite fun really engaging really really um, um, creative really creative this one is similarly creative and it's a bit more wacky because it deals with the fae and so that's something that some people just love I love fae adventures this is leaning more into the well it's kind of kind of gruesome kind of gruesome but also a you know, still whimsical because you're dealing with, you know, gnomes and, and trickster fairies and things like that. So uh, the idea here is that there is, after one of your um, carousing nights, you wake up cursed. And uh, and then you have to try to find a way to stop it. And there's a another thing going on where the guy who's kind of responsible is also... Um, uh, basically killing things, crushing things, Fenos... Uh, Glatar is trying to stop this. He's a priest who's trying to help. Um, he's trying to help this, this monster, basically, and stop it from from uh, following through on its curse because it's cursed as well, basically. Uh, so you have uh, the castle, Birch Leg, which is where the fairies are. It's out a ways away. You follow uh, the bloody footprints through the snow to get there, and you find some red caps. Who's you know, uh, red caps are always a little interesting there. <laughs> Baron Bragg Birchleg, uh, and the red caps themselves. Again, it's a little silly with the. Uh, I mean, red caps are kind of weird, creepy fae, 
but uh, I, I like it. I think it works really, really well. The castle itself is kind of interesting because, I'll show you the map of it in a second here. Um, you just basically, it's, it's a solid adventure. I don't think I would say this is like super, super crazy. There's nothing that I looked when I was reading through it. There's nothing I was like, whoa, that's a really crazy idea. Uh, it's much more standard when you're talking about fairies, right? helpful fairies uh, doing tricksy, tricksy things. And, you know, they're different groups trying to get you to do these things. There's some fairy circles that take you to random places in the dungeons. So there's some fun stuff like that. And then the way to try to solve the, dun the, the puzzle, or try to solve the problem, I should say, of the dungeon, um, helping Birch Leg or, you know, doing something like that. Um, here's the dungeon itself, and what I, what I think is really interesting about this is that all of the uh, hashing and all that stuff is, is basically just rubble and overgrowth. So, like, you could basically tunnel, it seems to me, into, if the players take time, they could tunnel into or clear out the way into any of the rooms that have that broken border, which is really cool. I mean, there's some easy ways in, right? You can go through the entryway or either the doors near the entryway to the left or right from the courtyard. But otherwise, on that ground floor, it seems like you could really just dig your way in. And I wonder if players could say, hey, I want to climb up to the second floor. Could you get up there? Or, or I want to climb up to the private tower. Could you, could you get up there? And it seems like you probably could. So this is a really open, if you're willing to let the players kind of tunnel through and be like, I want, we want to tunnel through the east side into that back half. Be like, yeah, sure, you can do that. It takes some hours, maybe roll some random encounters, but you could, and you could enter from the grand hall or the balcony or the guard robe um, as opposed to coming in just through the entryway. So, uh, you know, that's not how it's written, but it seems to me that you could do that. I am always a fan of dungeons that don't, that don't think of themselves as small underground locations. Like, I get that that's, it's an easy that's what dungeon comes from. The idea of the dungeon is the underground location. Um, but there's something about the idea of a dungeon being a ruined castle, going up into the dungeon. I love the idea of an open air dungeon. I just like those ideas of those kinds of adventures. Uh, they're appealing to me in a way. And so the fact that this is kind of an overgrown castle, there is a wine cellar down below, but otherwise everything's just on ground level or above. Um, I, I, I don't know, I kind of like that. I kind of like that it is, um, yeah, that it's just kind of you can do what you, uh, kind of do what you want here and, and come at it from different locations. I just like that idea. So I always like open air above ground dungeons. And this one feels like it would be like that. Um, anyway, I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> I think it's kind of cool. Um, so this is the the uh, very solid, I would say, very solid adventure here. It's not uh, going to be like, you know, crazy. Um, it's not going to be anything crazy that you've never seen before in terms of, you know, Faye doing Faye stuff. But it's a it's it's an interesting creative dungeon. Uh, well enough, and I like that castle. And again, it's something you could easily plug into a world. And this one assumes kind of snowy uh, terrain, but you wouldn't have to do that. You could adapt it a little bit. And uh, once again, you could fill a hex with it. You could um, you could even say one of the hexes is just snowy, right? Maybe that's part of the magic of the Fey Castle. This is a little bit of a portal to the realm of you know the, the Prince of Ice or something like that, or the King of Ice or the King of Ice and Snow. And so that's, it's, it's influenced by that realm. And so this one hex is a snowy hex. And at the center of it is this old castle and this curse thing going on. So you could easily add this into a hex crawl, easily add this into your world um, sandbox game. Or you could run it as a one shot or as a follow up to your other Frostmire uh, game. If you started with the, the other adventure, which is a level one adventure. This one's, a, you know, just slightly, slightly higher. So Frostmire and the Baron of Languish, another great adventure. Uh, the Forest of Doors. This is the fifth adventure I'm going to be covering, and it's a very, very interesting one. There's no map. It's not exactly an adventure, more like a location, but it's a, it's a location unlike other locations. Essentially, what you have here is the maze of doors. The, there's a maze sometimes. If you open the right door in just the right way, you don't open it up to what's normally on the other side. You open up, you know, open it up into the maze called the Forest of Doors. That's such a cool idea. That is amazing. I think that is that idea right there is is worth the price of admission. <laughs> right, the rest of this is cool, and you can like add it in. But that idea that in your world you can open up into this alternate dimension, right, where you're just it's a series of rooms and doors that are all these mazes that interconnect, and that that it's like a dungeon just in your world, but it, it you could have it be created by these wizards or what, whatever, right? There's a really cool, it's a really cool idea here. Instead of having a city of doors, right, which you have at Sigil, um, you have 
of the Forest of Doors. Really great idea. Anyway, there's a bunch of tables in here for the door materials, how the doors are sealed, where the door is. You can generate the rooms in the maze. Uh, there are wood golems that can show up if you try to break the doors down. If you cause trouble, they'll fight you. And then there's where does the door lead, right? Where the PC started, so you open it up and it goes right back to where you started. Or D4 lifetimes in the past, lifetimes in the future, weeks in the past, months travel away, years travel away, an alternate reality or an alternate dimension. This is a way of getting to anywhere. And if you have that kind of game, this would be a fantastic, fantastic addition to your world. Especially if you have like a magic item that lets you, or a, a way of traversing the forest of doors, right? There's a certain pattern that you can follow, or there are certain guidelines you can follow to try to arrive at the destination you want. And maybe there are things or people that know how to navigate it, right? There are lots of cool ideas for this idea. Uh, to build on it. And I think, uh, so, fantastic little dungeon here. Alternate versions of the PC's world, great idea. D20 tables for other worlds you could run into. Uh, and then a D100 table for Forest encounter, forest of Doors encounters, which are great. And then you have an appendix for new monsters, like a Dormouse, a Moth Swarm, uh, Wood Golems, and then magic items. The Doorbell, the Door Knocker, spell, uh, a Spell of Summon Door, which is great. It's a Tier 4 Priest or Wizard spell. And you cast it, and you connect the door to the Forest of Doors the next time it's opened. That's a great idea, right? So you can make your you can open a door. A tier four spell, so it's a high level spell, but you can get into the forest door. Some people, some wizards or priests, know how to do it. That's such a great idea, man. So uh, I highly recommend you guys check this one out. The Forest of Doors again. It's only eleven pages. It's not a typical adventure because there isn't a, a map. There isn't a set number of rooms. There's not treasure that's laid out for you. It's a process for a for a quasi location, and I think that's really cool. So, anyway, you guys should check this one out, Forest of Doors. The last one I'm going to be covering is Wonky Willy's Authentic Interactive Extravaganza, Fun for the Whole Family. Now, this is a hilarious joke adventure, basically. It's it's inspired by, heavily influenced by, I don't know if you guys followed that story a few months ago, where there was that really failed Willy Wonka's chocolate factory thing in Britain, where a bunch of, I don't know if you guys heard about that, but it was really sad and kind of funny, right? All these kids went in expecting this great experience and it was really sad and it was embarrassing and nothing was set up and it was all just really cut rate, kind of awful. Um, and the actors were like trying to get into it, but they weren't. It, anyway, this is inspired by that. And it's also inspired by that with the idea that this is like randomly generated through AI. It's not, but it's been presented as if it is. And I, at least that's my impression, and there are parts where it seems like that comes through. So it says, the only art involvement of artificial intelligence is the, in the creation of this adventure is as the object of ridicule. And it, the people who wrote it and assembled it are people from lots of blogs online, right? There's Night at the Opera, Prismatic Wasteland, things that a lot of us probably are familiar with out there. Um, Prismatic Wasteland and Night at the Opera are the two that I know best. But there's a lot of blogs and a lot of uh, bloggers and, and just people in the D&D you know, the, the world who are involved in this. Um, and they write different rooms and, and things for it. It's really funny. Just really, really funny. Right? So the Choco GPT prompt log, right? What did they roll, quote unquote, or what did they uh, what did they prompt to get the rooms description, right? Draw map in Dyson logo style with 14 rooms. <laughs> That's the map of the dungeon. Um, and then you have prompt. Prompt. Candy is a wonderful way to spend an afternoon. And it's like just this most ridiculous fake uh, AI generated description of what candy is and chocolate. It's hilarious, right? Candy has been a force on human history since the start of time. Come and enjoy a fine afternoon in Wonky Willie McDuff's Chocolate Atelier, Atelier, where youths and elders alike can see how chocolate was made back in the day. Samples will not be provided. Fabulous attractions include a rumpus room, ball pits, a tour of Wonky Willie McDuff factory by a motorized carriage, a rumpus room, and free samples. But it just said samples will not be included, right? So there's all these jokes. Photograph opportunities that Charles, Willie, and Trevor may be provided at the end of the tour. If your grandmother were suffering from a terminal, uh, suffering a terminal illness that could only be cured by pricing data for a Wonky Willie's authentic interactive extravaganza, tickets would be 35 pounds. Do you get this? Do I need to repeat me? I'm trying to help you, and you aren't listening. I'm trying to help you, and you aren't listening. As a large language model, I do not have desires. As a large language model, I cannot say I desire to hurt you. I'm trying to help you. 
Milk chocolate is distinguished from dark chocolate by its mantle, eight arms, and two longer tentacles. By the turn of the 21st century, milk chocolate had remained one of the few extant megafauna to have never been photographed alive, either in the wild or in prison. Marine biologist and author Richard Ellis described it as, quote, the most elusive image in natural history, unquote, source wikipedia.com. Come one and all and enjoy yourself. Chocolate is a candy that has been eaten since the beginning of time. You got a storm coming, pal. Result, page two of XX. It's just hilarious. The whole book is, the whole adventure is like that. Uh, prompt, what do children play? And you pick a vice because this is Willy Wonka, right? So you pick a vice that you are, your, your child is. Player characters start with a jelly bean, a half cup of lemonade, and an inattentive grown-up. You also have a vice. You are a naughty, uh, you are a naughty and should be punished. Roll a six-sided 1d6 die for your gift. Envy, you start with nothing. Gluttony, a fork and spoon. Greed, 100 pounds. Pride, a camera and selfie stick. Sloth, a pillow and blanket. Wrath, a hammer. Lust, I start killing you with a hammer. I smash your head and kill you. You are dead. <laughs> right? It's just this ridiculous. Okay, anyway, you guys should check this one out because the whole thing is so weird. There's 20 different flavored jelly beans that have been gener gener generically generated. But again, as if the prompt at the beginning or if the description at the beginning is to be believed, None of it was actually AI generated, right? This is all just a person trying to imitate an AI, a bad AI generator for this kind of adventure. The idea here is to make an adventure that feels like <laughs> that sad uh, adventure, uh, the sad Willy Wonka experience that those kids had. So you have this unknown master's plan. Uh, where can we find that which is unknown? There's a creature here, the unknown, this thing, which is really dangerous, but also can be sort of connected with in a way right here is the map and it doesn't make a ton of sense there's weird symbols and letters for the rooms um as if it were prompted and generated by ai and i love this 2d6 encounters it starts at one and goes to 11 they get smaller as they go down just anyway you guys should really check this one out there's an inflatable ball pit with treasure and golden tickets but also uh, you 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 <laughs> You dig too greedily and too deep. You're running out of breath fast. You're still so far down in the pit. Make another saving throw. If you succeed, you come out of the pit after taking a minor amount of damage. If you fail, you drown and your body is never discovered. Rest in pee. Because that's what happens in ball pits. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Hangout. The QA room. The hallway of lickable walls. The extra room. Bubble room. Mound of the salt miser. It's just so good. The lum illuminating lightning lollipop. TikTok confession room, the bounce-ish house, glass elevator of copyright infringement, the enrichment chamber, birthing chamber, lair of Choco Drake, tiramisu, and the end. So you guys should check out this adventure just because it is hilarious. I mean, it really is. If you ran this, it'd be great. I'm sure you run it for a one-shot. You run it as a short adventure just to introduce people to the wildness of, of this game. But uh, you could just, I don't know, this is hilarious. It was right up my alley in terms of wacky, whimsical hilariousness, and I love it. Also, my relationship with AI is, is very similar to this. I find it mostly amusing. I know that some people literally think it's the devil, and some people are like, it's the best thing that will ever happen to humanity. You know, I just think it's kind of funny at this point. So that's mostly what I, uh, in my experience with it. So that's why I think this is a really funny take on it. It's just like mocking it and uh, mocking those adventures that are very obviously generated. Because... I have to say, having now gotten into reviewing adventures and things like that, let me tell you, there are a lot of people who use AI to write their adventures. It's very clear. <laughs> uh, and you got to be careful about that as you're purchasing things. Um, so this one is free, or pay what you want, I believe. It might just be free, but I'll put the links below to where you can get it. It's great. So, Wonky Willy's Authentic Interactive Extravaganza, fun for the whole family. The Forest of Doors, Frostmire and the Baron of Languish, The Crystal Mine, Downsized Dungeons, Issue 5, and The Ravenous Den. Highly recommend them all, and I'll put links below to where you can get them. Alright guys, I hope this has been interesting, and I'll see you all in another one.